Heavenly Father, thank you for fulfilling our hearts with gratitude. As we seeded our thoughts in the goodwill of creation, we discovered your divine nature leading the way into our greater good. Where we released the material change, our prosperity grew. As we sowed love, abundant compassion flourished. Where we shared bread, our souls are fed. Thank you for allowing this realization to move forward through your divine nature. Thank you for the remembrance that we are richly blessed and highly favored. So be it. Join with me in blessing our children everywhere on our planet. We love you. We bless you. We truly appreciate you just the way you are, and we behold the Christ in you. Welcome. Good morning. My name is Charlotte Coachman, and I am here to help with the service today. And on behalf of Unity in the Olympics, located in Port Angeles, Washington, I welcome you to our sanctuary celebration service. At this moment, our building is closed to gatherings, but our hearts and our minds are ever open to share love and light with you. We welcome you wherever you are, and thank you for joining us for our virtual service on Facebook and on YouTube. And now for our declaration of faith. Let us begin today's service with the affirmation of the truth of our being and knowing by reciting together our declaration of faith the fundamental principle of the unity movement, as well as unity in the Olympics. There is only one power and one presence in the universe and in my life, God, the good omnipotent. The Daily Word is a bi-monthly publication by Unity Worldwide Ministries in Unity Village, Missouri, with subscribers from around the world it was began in 1924. The Daily Word contains heart-centered articles, daily thoughts and affirmations to comfort and guide us along our spiritual journey. Today's Daily Word is joy, and the affirmation is, joy is my constant companion. I discover re reasons to feel joyful every day, even in the most challenging circumstances. I begin by centering my awareness on the Christ the divine presence within. I feel love and peace lift my heart and possibilities for good fill my thoughts. I am joyous. I may experience joys as exuberance, delight, and wonder. Joy may also come quietly as the peaceful assurance of God's presence wherever I am, whatever I'm doing. My awareness of joy brings a glow to even the most ordinary day. As I engage wholeheartedly in all that is mine to do today, I share my joy with everyone. Through kind words, a sunny smile, and a warm welcome to everyone I meet, I radiate joy and bless the world with my positivity, my happiness, and my bliss. And today's Bible reading verse is Psalm 118, number 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
happiness squared times ecstasy. It's a moment of unity. Today, our speaker, our guest speaker, is Reverend Eva McGinnis. Reverend Eva is a metaphysical minister with a background in teaching, writing, and counseling. In the last four years, she has been facilitating the discussion groups of the Jesuit, the personal Christ books of Oak Ridge University, of which she is a co-founder. In 2018, she received an honorary ordination to the Angel Ministry through Gateway University. A number of her poems were published in Voices of the Olympic Peninsula, Volume 2 in 2018, as well as Volume 3 in 2019. Eva is a passionate minister about, and she's passionate about our ministry and the mission to create heaven on earth through love, peace, gratitude, and joy. Reverend Eva. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Joyful greetings. It is an honor to be here again. Many of you know me as the cheerleader of joy for Unity Church, but I really didn't consciously know that today's daily word would be joy. You see, I randomly picked this date on which to speak only afterwards did I get the Daily Word publication and turn to today's page, and there it was, word for the day, joy. <laughs> I found this wonderfully funny, and I jokingly said, really, God, that's my topic? That's what you want me to talk about? <laughs> and I got an answer soon afterwards. I received a letter from a dear friend uh, in Alaska and uh, in it was a little card, which you'll see on my screen here, that said, we have to choose joy and keep choosing it daily. And I said, okay, I love God's sense of humor. So let's say today's affirmation together. Joy is my constant companion. And the title for this, song, this talk also came as a pun from the universe when I saw a sign that said, boy, <laughs> with the J missing. And suddenly it became clear to me that that was a big hint. We can take the boy, which to me, to me means size of complaining and belly aching, and just add the J for the juiciness of life and make it into joy. <laughs> Hence putting the J back with the OI. What a metaphor for acceptance and transformation with one simple sound. Thank you God for those clear instructions. So my goal for today's message is to remember to focus on joy. 
can make it your constant companion as an affirmation that we have today. So the slides says, remember to focus on the joy in your life. Remember that life is a gift. See things from a bigger perspective and be grateful. Now, the next is a slide that I took on Kalelak Beach. There is no effort in love and joy. As I take the deep breath of love, I experience peace and joy. Joy is the miracle of this body that I have the privilege of walking in, playing in, and seeing you through. Joy is the rising of the sun and its setting each evening. Joy is the chorus of spring frogs in my backyard. Joy is the nature unfolding and overflowing with beauty and generosity in every blossom and every rainbow. There is joy in having the gift of touch, the ears to hear, and the heart to express love. There is so much to be grateful for and to express as abundant joy. So let's say it with enthusiasm across the virtual and the real world. Joy is my constant companion. Thank you. I may be a little early for Christmas in July, but it's summer. And the last time I spoke of joy was at Christmas 2018, and I made these Jingle Bell keychains for everyone in the congregation. We sure had fun with them. And if you still have yours, please go get them and jingle with me throughout the service and whenever you need a little bit of joy in your life. Because we need a little Christmas right this very minute, right now. So the story behind this is that a few years ago, I was attending the Unity Church in Federal Way where Reverend uh, Thomas Coates was the minister. And he declared one fine summer day that we were going to have a stress-free Christmas, Christmas in July. And we had a great Christmas service. We had Christmas carols and lights and a great big outdoor picnic afterwards. And nobody worried about presents or decorations or travel. We only focused on the meaning and the joy of Christmas. And we combined that with the beauty of long daylight and the sound of jingle bells. Can you see how simple life can be? How much joy we can experience, even if we're not in the same room together. You have the freedom to treat yourself and those you may be living with to Christmas anytime. Just get out your Christmas spirit and let it flow out to others. And if you have your jingle bells, let's ring them as an example of the joy we can create. And if you don't have one of my jingle bell keychains, leave a message at the Unity Church here in Port Angeles, Unity in the Olympics, and I will make you one with a donation to Unity gratefully accepted. So let's say it again. And if you have your jingle bells, let's bring them as we say. Joy is my constant companion. Hmm. Thank you. So back to the seriousness of today and a question that seems to hang in the air. Is it okay for us to be joyful when the world is still undergoing the crisis of the virus, the first lockdown in our lifetime, and civil unrest? The broadcasts from the media world, whose job it is to bring us news, to get us, give us our attention, and to protect and scare us, focuses on the seriousness and suffering. And we certainly need to be mindful of situations in the world 
And this presentation is meant to be respectful of all vulnerable people getting through genuine pain and grieving at this time or feeling overwhelmed with financial worries, living or working in dangerous conditions. We know prayer and financial assistance and sending love to all who are in crisis, are all the things we can do for our brothers and sisters. We also need to be mindful of how we treat each other and remember that when we look into their eyes, we are seeing ourselves. There is no separation. We are all created equal in the eyes of God. Nevertheless, this message is about how we can choose meaning and joy no matter what life presents to us, especially for those of us who have so many blessings, but are in a constant state of worry and apprehension about the future and bracing ourselves for the worst. This state actually works to the detriment of our immune system and certainly brings on unhappiness. So we need to look at the bigger picture and let go of unreasonable worries and stress that we ourselves create. That is with the oi, said with an expression of worry and mixed fear, with fear and anger, it's all about. This was a common expression in my childhood and it was often paired with the Polish word rane, as in oi rane, which translated means, oh my wounds. That was a heavy duty cultural message to have been, have been around. And it's only been in the last few years that I realized that the oi factor, as I call it, had a role in building resiliency in future situations. As an example of this paradox, I found a really poignant article titled, When Savoring a Pleasant Moment is a Radical Act, by Iranian writer Ari Hanavar, who collaborates with the Musical Ambassadors for Peace. This is what he said. Those of us who lived through the fundamentalist grab, power grab in Iran experienced a revolution of joylessness. During the eight year Iran-Iraq war, which killed over a million people, life was far from joyful. We Iranians had become accustomed to daily funerals, food rations, political oppression, and ongoing threat of bombs and missiles. On top of that, consuming alcohol, dancing, or playing non-sanctioned music had suddenly become illegal under post-revolutionary laws. So even with these external challenges, I observed that adult, some adults' ability to become scrappy and use available resources for the essential task of nurturing joy, stability, and a sense of humor. Faced with food rationing, they experimented with new recipes. Faced with wartime blackouts, they told stories and recited poems. And then with the threat of bombing looming, they told jokes and made everyone laugh until our eyes watered. Sure, this made us feel better in the moment, but what research is discovering is that joy and laughter are essential for building the superpower of resiliency and even boosting our immunity and overall health. When we cultivate joy, we gain the ability to feel the overwhelm without becoming overwhelmed ourselves. Let me read that part again. When we cultivate joy, we gain the ability to feel the overwhelm, he's not denying it, without becoming overwhelmed ourselves, end of quote. So what if joy wasn't just frowned upon, but was forbidden? Would we value it more? That is the irony about humans experiencing difficult situations. There was and always is the grace and the strength of the human spirit called faith. It turns the oi into joy. Faith, hope, and love turn oi into joy. 
and the key lies with how we show up for each other. We need to extend hope and support and lovingly lift each other up in challenging times. We need to live our faith. We have to tag team in this crisis, even if it's from a distance. As Reverend Asha said a few weeks ago, we are invited to perceive this COVID experience as a sacred place, a sacred space. This includes not just our physical space, but the sacred space in our hearts and minds to be in compassion with our fellow human beings and to also lift them up with our passion for life, with our trust in the divine order, with humor and a smile that shines even from six feet away. That's adding the J to the OI. That is what true joy is about. This is the kind of joy that Master Jesus had as he compassionately healed the sick and at the same time played with the children. He says to channel Don Carter, quote, while you recognize the sadness and the chaotic stirring of the world you live in, remember to affirm that you are open to boundless joy and restful peace. You can feel the pain that others in the world are experiencing without living within your, without it living in your inner sanctuary. You do not need to accept it as yours as it does not add healing to the wounds. 